So tonight we're going to talk about words of knowledge, okay? And uh, of the nine gifts of the Spirit that are listed in 1 Corinthians 12, the word of knowledge is one of those, okay? And as we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we'll look here on our notes at introduction. The Holy Spirit empowers each believer with the gifts of the Spirit which are to be exercised in service to others as God releases His power and revelation through His people. So each believer God wants to use in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are many gifts that we could talk about, but tonight we're really going to zero in on words of knowledge. And uh, we'll look at how all, the many ways that words of knowledge are used but primarily how words of knowledge are used in healing ministry, okay? And the Apostle Paul wrote about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, and he wrote in verses 7 and 8, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. I'll give you a definition here from Dr. Randy Clark. And if you're familiar with Dr. Randy Clark, he's the king of the word of knowledge. He often uses words of knowledge when he is ministering in healing meetings. And that's one of the primary ways that he flows. And he describes a word of knowledge as a supernatural revelation of information that is given by the Holy Spirit. It is not something that the person who receives the word knew from their own natural senses. Rather, it is supernaturally revealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, for example, if, uh, if you're in a meeting and you see someone with a cast on their leg, um, you can't say, the Holy Spirit has just shown me that He wants to heal people with broken legs. Okay? That's not a word of knowledge. That's, a, that's a, a gift of the obvious. You, you saw it. You knew it was happening. Rather, a, a word of knowledge is a revelatory gift of the Holy Spirit, which often, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, it's a gift that you know supernaturally. There's no way you could know it in the natural. The Holy Spirit reveals it. And, uh, you know, it, and we'll talk about the value of that. Let me read this that I started again. A word of knowledge is a revelatory gift of the Holy Spirit which often works through believers to facilitate the release of, phys of physical healing. It's often used in healing ministry. Um, it's often also used a lot in evangelism. And um, in evangelism situations, the Holy Spirit will often give a revelatory word of knowledge concerning a person's need for physical healing. Now, someone asked the question today, and it was a good question. What's the difference between prophecy and a word of knowledge? And often when you see someone moving in the prophetic, that the, gift, the simple gift of prophecy will flow and overlap with words of knowledge. If you, who's familiar with Sean Boltz? You know, Sean Boltz will give words. He'll call out your address. He'll uh, <laughs> give such specific things, but those are really words of knowledge. He's identifying something that he couldn't have known in the natural and calling those things out. And I, what I often see is when, uh, when a word of knowledge is given, that opens up people's heart to receive the prophetic word, to receive the encouragement, to receive the strengthening, for, to receive perhaps the direction that might come through the prophetic word. Um, you know, I was in, in, in a meeting about a year ago where a friend of mine from Dallas was in a meeting, and we were there in, in a church in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and Sean was ministering, and he called out her address, and he called out all these details about her life, and she was floored. I know her. She wasn't a fake planted in the crowd. I know her quite well, and, uh, and God, uh, God spoke those words of knowledge, okay? So, um, how, why does the Holy Spirit use words of knowledge in this, in this manner? Now, Dr. Randy Clark wrote, this is an indication that God wishes to heal the person revealed in the word of knowledge and usually at the same time 
the word is given. When understood in this way, a word of knowledge builds faith in the person who needs the healing and also in the person who received the word of knowledge. And just imagine if you're in a meeting, you have a physical need, you haven't told anyone, and someone calls out a word of knowledge about your condition. Would that build faith in you? Absolutely. That would build faith in me. Um, and even as the minister, if you're giving a word of knowledge and you're stepping out in faith, uh, you're stepping out and risking that, and people respond, that builds faith in you as well. I know uh, the first time I've been on a couple of Global Awakening trips uh, to Brazil, the first time um, I was in a... There were nights that we were all together, the team with Dr. Randy Clark, and then there were other nights that we went into groups and went with different ministers to minister. And at the end of the meeting, the team would always give words of knowledge. So if you go on a trip with Dr. Randy Clark and, or Global Awakening, just be prepared to give words of knowledge. You're part of the ministry team. And so um, I, I can't remember if it was me or someone else on the team gave a word of knowledge about cataracts being healed. And so at the end of the meeting, we're all standing at the front. People are coming to us for prayer. We're working with interpreters, even though many of the Brazilians could speak a bit of English. And there was an older gentleman who came up to me and basically told me, no more cloudy. And I was like, excuse me? He's like, no more cloudy. And we hadn't even prayed for him. But when the word of knowledge was called out, there was faith in him, and he laid a hold of it, and he, he was already healed before he came forward. And um, I had so much faith that when he told me that, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> But it produced faith in him. And um, I've even heard testimonies from Dr. Clark about um, giving words of knowledge uh, about a, a right or a left ear being healed. And when that happened, even there was a lady in the, one of those meetings in Brazil who didn't even understand English, and her ear popped open. Even when she didn't understand what was being said, when the word went forth, it caused that to happen. Okay? So, you know, a word of knowledge giving accurately will generally produce faith in those involved, okay? Now, once that, that word of knowledge is given, depending on the setting, and we'll talk about that more as we go on, but if it is appropriate, pray for the person when the word of knowledge is given, okay? If you pray for that person, uh, it, it's going to produce faith, uh, the, and really, as soon as you can, the better, okay? Um, you know, words of knowledge, just they wreck people. Uh, they, they just do. And I think I've told the testimony before, but uh, there was a younger guy and I, a uh, young guy named Josh Ryan. I don't know if anybody knows Josh. And we were out treasure hunting one night, and we were at um, Jack in the Box here in Ardmore, uh, a good place to give words of knowledge. Um, but no, we felt like we were supposed to stop there and, and we saw this one guy and Josh had a word of knowledge for him and I can't even remember what the word of knowledge was. It was something about his leg. And when Josh gave that word of knowledge, and I'm not sure the guy wasn't a bit mentally impaired by illegal substances. Know what I'm saying? He was high. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> just got to spell it out. And uh, But the guy was like, Where's your camera? <laughs> he thought that it was, we were some, paranoid. that we, yeah, he's a little paranoid. That was my second clue, that there may have been illegal substances involved. But he, he, he knew that either we were pulling a joke on him, but the more we spoke to him, the more he realized that, that this was real and that God was called, God had his number. And, uh, you know, he, he began to sober up a little bit. And I just think it's really exciting when, um, when God gives a word of knowledge to someone who's stoned and, and, and touches them. So, um, so, you know, he was very touched that night. Now, you know, before we really talk about a word of knowledge being used in healing ministry, uh, just understand that the word of knowledge, it is a very versatile gift. And it can be used outside of healing ministry. 
So here's, here's a few scriptural examples, okay? Now, Jesus operated in the word of knowledge as seen in the account of the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 1 through 42. Now, I'm not going to read the whole passage. It's very lengthy, and, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he, he told the woman, she said, well, you know, he goes, go and, go and tell your husband about what's going on. And she goes, well, you know, he's not really my husband. And, and, and Jesus read her mail. He knew. And, and just that simple thing alone, and, Jesus, and you know, she's like, well, I perceive that you're a prophet. She gave him a very religious answer. Okay? But the word of knowledge enabled him to cut through some of those defenses that she had up. And it opened up the woman's heart to the lordship of Jesus. Because he saw who she was. He saw even the sin that was in her life. And he was able to go past that and touch her. And not only did it open up her heart to understand that Jesus was Messiah, this woman goes and tells, I think this is funny, she goes and tells all the men in the city I guess she had a better relationship with the men than she did with the women. But she went and told all the men in the city about Jesus and that he was Messiah. So it's no accident, I think, that, you know, through a word of knowledge, this woman who goes and preaches the gospel, this is Jesus, uh, first, maybe the first evangelist before the resurrection. And Mary Magdalene was probably the first evangelist after the resurrection. Both women, hello, preaching the gospel. <laughs> but, you know, not only does she go and share, it sows seeds of the word of God in a whole region. And so what happens in Acts chapter 8, when uh, the persecution hits Jerusalem and the believers are scattered and they go about preaching the gospel... Um, they start preaching in Samaria and a revival breaks out because there'd already been something sown in that region. So, uh, And that all came through a word of knowledge. Isn't it interesting? So God can really use words of knowledge in a lot of different s situations. Uh, another example where we see a, a word of knowledge, and let's just go ahead and turn here. Let's turn to John chapter 1. Verses 47 and 48. And this is Jesus calling his disciples. In verse 47 of John chapter 1, uh, it says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Isn't it interesting? You know, he, this produced faith and belief in Nathanael regarding Jesus' role as Messiah and Lord. And you know, this really, honestly, this wasn't even a Sean Bolt's word of knowledge. He just said, there's an Israelite in whom there's no guile. There's something of his character that was revealed to Jesus. And it so touched Nathaniel. He's like, how do you know me? And, and really, isn't that something that everybody is looking for, to be known by God? And when God knows you, when he calls you out, it's an amazing thing. It's like, God, I... I've heard the Sunday school stories. I've sang the songs, but you really know me. And even, um, you know, this past weekend as we did healing rooms, and it was very interesting. And, of course, we have prophetic teams also, and, and people can come and get uh, prophecy and ministry. And, um, you know, we ministered to, a, uh, I'll just say, an evangelical family. And the two sons, who are probably in their early 20s, um, 
they'd never experienced any type of prophetic ministry. And so in the middle of prophesying, God's giving words of knowledge, and, and they got rocked. And, and they walked away, and, you know, Jamie said, my wife said when they came to the back, they were like, they knew everything about me. You know, they're like, oh, my gosh, how did they know? But part of it was not just prophecy, but there was the word of knowledge moving in and out of, of what God was saying in that. And it further opened up their heart to receive what the Lord was saying and let them know, you know, I, the Lord's, like the Lord saying, I see I see you, and I was with you in that moment, right? All right. Um, besides these, there's some other examples on the second page here under, under C. Scripture records the early church moving in all the gifts of the Spirit, including words of knowledge. Um, Peter used the word of knowledge to know that Ananias and Sapphira had lied to the Holy Spirit in Acts 5, 3 through 9. Yikes. You know, and with the gifts, you, you have an understanding that sometimes they do move together. That could have been discerning of spirits, okay? But Peter's like, you know, the Holy Spirit's revealed to me that, you know, you're lying about this. So we see that happen. Um, you know, sometimes when you start knowing things by the Spirit that you couldn't have known in the natural, it actually can be a little bit scary. Right? That happens. Um, also, in um, I think this next one is just tremendous. Let's look in Acts chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. Acts, Acts chapter 9, verses 8 through 12. And, you know, when you're, when you're moving in deliverance ministry, the word of knowledge is a very, very handy tool. Because sometimes you'll just know. You'll just know things. Um, not only will you discern things and discern spirits, you'll know, you'll see things. And so many times these gifts will overlap, but the word of knowledge is very necessary in not only deliverance, but inner healing and healing ministry. So let's look at this in Acts chapter 9, verses 8, to, 8 through 12. And this is uh, where Paul has been just thumped on the road to Damascus. And uh, he got a godly thumping, right? And uh, Acts chapter 9, and he got up in verse 8, got up from the ground. Though his eyes were open, he couldn't see anything. They brought him into, Ma into Damascus, and he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus in verse 10 named Ananias, different Ananias than we just read about. Completely different situation. One's dead. <laughs> And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he was seen in a vision. He has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So, you know, he, he actually gets direction and instruction from Jesus in this vision. And it says in, in verse 17, Ananias departed and entered the house, and after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Ananias supernaturally knew that Saul had been converted, and Saul's famous. Ananias is like, that's the dude that's killing Christians. So he knows by revelation that, that, he's, that Paul's been converted. Saul's been converted. He knows where he could find him. He knows that he's, he's, going, he's been sent so that he would regain his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. Now, that came in a vision but it's clearly a supernatural word of knowledge that's given. And, and several, many words of knowledge together. It's very, very significant. I just find that so powerful. Um, here's another one. Uh, since we're in the book of Acts, let's just go ahead and flip over to Acts 14.10. And uh, this is... Let's back up and read verse 9. Uh, 
It says, This man was listening to Paul as he spoke, who, when he had fixed his gaze upon him and had seen that he had faith to be made well, um, and with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet, and he leaped up and began to walk. Okay? So what's the word of knowledge in this? It's, I believe it's that Paul knew that he had faith to be made well. Okay? And, you know, some, sometimes maybe you know by a person's response that they have faith to be made well. I believe Paul knew, whether it was by a word of knowledge, whether it was by discerning of spirits, whether it was those things working together, but Paul knew that he had faith to be made well, right? When, when you're ministering, and you guys that have ministered, you understand this, you often can see faith on certain people. You can feel whether there's faith in the room or not. And often you can tell who has faith and who doesn't. Again, that could be discerning of spirits, but sometimes it's, if it's just a knowing, and I believe that's a word of knowledge. So I think those are all some examples of word of knowledge. Now, this one was connected to healing with Paul, okay? Uh, but we're going to look a little bit more specifically how this gift operates in healing, okay? So, now I think we, you know, it's, it's very practical to study these things because oftentimes I believe that we are having words of knowledge and we just don't know it. So, the more you know about words of knowledge, the more that you know how to receive words of knowledge, the better. And the, the, when you become aware, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm having a word of knowledge. So we're going to go through these. There are seven ways to receive words of knowledge. I'm just going to list them, and then we're going to go back through them and review them. Again, some of you guys have been through this, but I, I, I'm going through it again. Um, and it's never a bad thing to review. All right, so the, the ways are you feel it, you read it, you see it, you think it, you say it, you dream it, and you experience it. So I'm going to go through explain all of these, give examples. I've had some words of knowledge certain ways and others, some of these I haven't, okay? So let's just, let's look at them. Now, the first one is feel it. And uh, Dr. Randy Clark wrote when we're talking about feeling it, the word comes, the word of knowledge comes as a brief physical pain that you can literally feel in your body. It is not a pain that you would normally have on your own, okay? Now, if you have sciatica <laughs> and you walk into a meeting and your sciatica flares up, you're not going to be like, oh, that's a word of knowledge. <laughs> you're not going to do that, okay? Uh, but, you know, that's why sometimes if you're going <laughs> into a meeting, do a body check before you go in. Go, make sure, okay, I'm not, okay. My bursitis isn't acting up. My gout's okay, right? <laughs> so, but, but check your body. And then, I, you know, you'll, you'll go into a meeting and sometimes you'll start feeling that. And, you know, Randy Clark, Dr. Clark says that this, you know, is probably how he receives most of his words of knowledge. Okay, but he has said that um, as he's gotten older, he said, I've had a harder time distinguishing between what's my pain and what's word of knowledge. <laughs> So he's having to rely on some other ways. And we can all identify that and as we are growing older. Ariel probably didn't get it, but the rest of us are starting to. <laughs> oh, she has seven kids. She's, you know. <laughs> she, oh, bless her Lord, right? Um, so <laughs> um, a few months ago, I was leading a service. This is just a testimony of my own that I put in here, here in the church. And I received a word of knowledge in this manner. I often, I generally, most of my words of knowledge do not come this way. But occasionally I will get them. Um, so I was having the congregation pray for specific physical needs of others. And my lower right back began to, sh to hurt with shooting pain into my hip. And I had not been experiencing this pain. So it just immediately started, and it because I'm very quick, it started when we're ministering to healing, and I thought, perhaps this is a word of knowledge. 
And, and so I spoke it out, and um, about four people in the service indicated that they were having that issue. So we called them up for prayer, we prayed for them, and they were all very touched by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now you'll, and you'll often find that, I don't understand this, but it seems like a lot of times, many times you'll have a word of knowledge, and it'll be for several people. And God just does that sometimes, okay? So another time, um, we, uh, I took a team. The first year that we did ministry school, uh, in the spring, I took a team to Haiti. And we taught on the prophetic for a week. Um, Haiti's an interesting place. And, uh, you know, we, <laughs> it took us two days to get there. There was like a, a tornado in Atlanta, and they shut down flights, and we drove back to Ardmore, and we went down the next day and caught a flight, and we missed our flight got delayed, and we missed it to Miami. It was just a mess, but it took us two days to get there to Haiti, and it's not, Haiti's not that far. Uh, but, you know, finally, we're, we're just rushing to get to, they'd already canceled one day of, one or two days of meetings, and we're rushing to get to the service. Um, we pull up in the van, we climb over the rock wall that looked like it had been bombed out and uh, <laughs> walked into the meeting under this pavilion. And as soon as I stepped over that rock wall, my knee began to hurt. And I was like, this is a word of knowledge. And sure enough, it was. And there came a point. And there came a point in the service where there was the opportunity to give that word and I gave it. Someone with a bad knee came up and got healed. Okay, so pay attention to what's going on with your body. Um, another one is you read it, okay? You, you literally like uh, read it in the spirit. I think when we, we talked about words of knowledge before, I know um, Ariel has had that happen before where she saw a specific word floating in the spirit. And again, it didn't have anything to do with healing, um, but uh, it was a situation that I really thank the Lord that he showed her. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, but you, you see it. And uh, Dr. Randy Clark wrote, you may see in your mind um, a person with a word written across his front, his back, or over his head, a word written on a wall or on a carpet, something like a newspaper headline or a banner. And Blaine Cook, um, and this is a testimony, and Blaine Cook was um, John Wimber's right-hand man in the vineyard. Um, very interesting guy. Uh, he led a team. The second time I went to Brazil with Global Awakening, he was one of the team leaders and just so powerfully flows in healing and the prophetic and words of knowledge, an amazing man. And uh, he was at, I believe this testimony is from uh, when he came to Randy Clark's Baptist Church uh, years and years ago. Uh, and, and John Wimber sent a team that Blaine led. And uh, but this may be a different testimony, so don't quote me on this. But uh, Blaine was praying for someone, and he saw their medical chart. He saw it in the Spirit. And because Blaine saw it and could read it, he could give with confidence some of the names of certain elements or ailments that he had never heard of before. And that's really remarkable. Talk about building faith. And at the time, he probably didn't even have Google. If we got a word of knowledge now, we're Googling to be like, is that real? <laughs> and just really step out in faith. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is not directly related to healing, but a healing of a marriage. Okay, um, John Wimber, I, and I've heard this testimony several times and read it in uh, one of his books, but he wrote about an incident where he was on a plane and saw the word adultery floating over the head of a middle-aged businessman. Um, the Holy Spirit then gave Wimber the name of the woman the man was having the affair with. And, and Wimber, I'm sure, very cautiously approached him and began to tell him what the Lord had shown him through a word of knowledge. And he broke down and said, it's true. Um, and the, the, he led him in a time of repentance. And then they called the man's wife over. Hallelujah. Amen. On a plane, all right? And so, again, there was repentance, there was uh, all this happening, 
So not physical healing, but healing of a marriage. And, you, you know, he saw that floating in the air over that businessman. And that would be like, say, what? What was that? Okay. Um, here's another one. You, you see it. Now, this is similar to reading it, but you see it like a vision or like a picture. And Dr. Randy Clark wrote, you may get a mental picture such as a body part, um, a person with a condition such as a limp, a person carefully holding his arm, a crutch, glasses, a person walking with a cane, a water bottle, a barbed wire fence, or an auto accident. So pay attention to those. Even some of them, as crazy as they may be, it may really speak to someone. Okay. Uh, here's another testimony from John, w John Wimber. He's in a meeting. He's getting ready to minister. He saw a mental picture of a woman's breast, which he at first thought was a distraction from the devil. <laughs> you know, here you are getting ready to minister, and you're like, oh, get behind me, Satan. No, devil. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, <laughs> that mental picture continued, and he saw the breast open up, and there was a tumor inside. So he realized it was a word of knowledge. He spoke it out. A woman with a tumor in her breast responded and was healed. Okay. So, you know, things like this may come very fast and very light, but pay attention to them. Pay attention. Uh, I, I, I believe I remember it was Bill Johnson sharing about, uh, or it was Bill or Randy Clark, I don't remember, in one of the healing schools that I attended, and he was talking about someone gave a word of knowledge, and it was here in the examples of like a water bottle. And that's a strange word of knowledge. But there was a lady in the meeting who carried a water bottle with her all the time because her salivary glands didn't work properly. And so her mouth stayed dry. And so when someone gave a, a, wa a, a word of knowledge, water bottle, as strange as that may be, what, what do you think that produced in her? She was like, whoa, that's for me. I'm carrying this all the time. She knew exactly what it meant, okay? All right, the next one is think it. Now, probably this is the way that I get words of knowledge the most often. And sometimes, for me, you know, I would almost define it as, and even sometimes when uh, I'm moving in the prophetic or I'm prophesying to somebody, it's not so much that I think it, it's like I just know it. It's, it's like, oh, I just know. I was, you know, prophesying to somebody this weekend, and I started, and I don't, I'm assuming this was right because it rocked the person, and I, and I was like, you know, you were protected in the past, and you had some friends that died, but the Lord's hand was on you, and he's just like, I mean, I just knew, okay? And that's kind of the example of, when you're that word of knowledge moving with the prophetic gift, okay. So Dr. Clark wrote, "You may get a. Um, I'm sorry, I looked back. You may sense in your mind that someone has a partial condition, or that the Holy Spirit has spoken the word to you. It is a mental impression, okay. Here's another testimony from me. Um, when I was first learning to move in these gifts, I was. Um, attending a prophetic conference at Day Spring Church in Springfield, Missouri. Um, the book that you're going to read in the month of March, uh, it's by Steve, Steve and Sally Wilson. Steve, this was at Steve and Sally's church. They're the founders of this church. Um, they now do a lot of traveling. I'm going to see Steve some this week at some meetings I'm going to. They were having a prophetic conference. I was there as one of the speakers and one of the staff members asked me to listen for a word of knowledge. It was really interesting what they were doing. During worship, he would just, he had certain people that he knew could move in words of knowledge, and he would just go to them, even some of the youth in the youth group, and say, Hey, it's God giving you a word of knowledge. And, and he'd just write down the words. And um, then we'd give them, or he, I can't remember what we did, he gave some of them. Um, and 
people came forward for healing. And so uh, one of the, I, I was very, I, it w- wasn't very loud. I mean, it wasn't like, Andy, TMJ. It was, like, it was light. It was quick. Um, so don't expect, you know, a finger to write it on the wall or a burning bush to appear in front of you. I mean, God may do that. But my experience is it's often light and quick. Um, and so pay attention. And, uh, you know, um, and, and with words of knowledge, you're just going to have to step out in faith. You, you're probably not going to get three confirmations before you give it. <laughs> and, and I think the more you move in it, you'll get confident, but you'll also, it's like you just know. And, it's, and I'm not saying that because I'm an expert. I'm, I'm still developing that. So um, I heard TMJ faintly impressed in my thoughts. I shared what I heard. And after worship, the words of knowledge were given by the staff pastor. A lady responded to the TMJ word. We laid hands on her and prayed. She was healed. And I was there about two or three days. And the next, this was like the first day. And the next day I checked with her. And the next day she's like, I'm still healed. I'm still healed. Right? It was exciting, and and it was exciting to me because I'm just starting to move in this, and it it built my faith. So, um, so and don't be afraid. And again, pay attention to this type of word of knowledge. The impression may be faint and quick, and do not be afraid to step out in faith. Okay. All right. The next one is you say it. Now, this is kind of an odd one, I'll admit. I've never really experienced this. But uh, Dr. Clark wrote, While talking or praying with someone, unpremeditated words may tumble out of your mouth relating to a physical condition you were unaware of. Now, this is not... There are some things that are similar that are occultic. This is not one of those. (laughs) Okay? And, um, you know, Dr. Clark shares about this was happening once when he was in a meeting and someone was explaining words of knowledge, just like we're doing here tonight. And while explaining, uh, they used the example of kidney and liver problems. And the person explaining hadn't even planned on talking about that. And it turned out that a man in the meeting had kidney failure as well as liver damage. So almost like a slip of the tongue, an accidental thing that was given, and the guy's like, "Uh, that's me. And so obviously they call him up for ministry and they minister to this guy. Okay? Um, Another one is dream it. And you could even say what we read about Ananias, you know, uh, Jesus appearing to him and saying, Go find Saul of Tarsus, and this is where he is, and this has happened, and you want you need to do this. Uh, so this could be a similar thing: dreaming something, maybe seeing it in a vision. Um, and here's the definition: while sleeping, you may have a vivid dream in which you have a new health problem. You see someone with a health uh, with a health problem. You hear someone talking about a health problem. You see an event acted out before you like a movie, such as a hospital scene or an accident. Okay. Now, I've, I don't know that I've given a word of knowledge from something like this. I have given prophetic words based on dreams I've had. I had a dream several years ago, and there was a, a, a girl I knew. She was graduating from high school, and in the dream... I was giving her a word. And so after I had that dream, I went to the leadership of my church and said, hey, I had this dream about this girl that's graduating from high school. And, you know, the pastor's wife that I was told this, she goes, your, your word is right on because she's about, she's going into the university. Um, she's doing a double major. It was very, very specific. And so I prophesied to her based on something that I dreamed. Okay, so be very open to what God will speak to you in dreams. Okay, 
Um, here's another example that comes from Randy Clark's early days of pastoral ministry. A young man in his church had been an alcoholic before getting saved. Uh, his wife, Deanne, Randy's wife, Deanne, had a dream that the young man was being tempted to begin drinking alcohol again. When Clark finally was able to speak with the man, he admitted that he drank for the first time in over a year. And this had happened after Deanne's dream. So not only was Randy able to minister to that young man, pray for strength and whatever, you know, however he ministered, he repented for not giving him the warning earlier. Because if I remember the testimony, you know, he's like, how do I go to this guy and say, hey, we had a dream you're drinking. Because <laughs> you just have to approach those things with real humility and real love and not an accusation. Uh, but that's real humility where you know not only you, you go to him, but you say, I'm sorry I didn't give this to you earlier. It might have prevented him from stumbling. Okay. And here's another one that's a little bit similar. And, and again, some of these are similar and they could even overlap. Uh, but Dr. Clark wrote, similar to dreaming it, uh, and here's it's the, the one, experience it. Similar to dreaming it, you may have a vivid vision while awake. It may be so strong that you're actually a part of what is happening, not just an observer. Now, the late John Wimber, his wife Carol Wimber, here's a testimony that she experienced. She literally heard a phone ring when no telephone was near enough to be heard in the church sanctuary. Okay, again, this is probably before cell phones, right? <laughs> but she's in the church sanctuary and she can't hear anything. And, and she felt that God was showing her that some people were involved in immoral activities involving the phone. And so she shared the word in the next service and people involved in these activities were ministered to and set free. Again, that probably really required some faith to say, God's shown me that there's a moral activity happening on the phone. Okay? Not only to, to give that word, but again, faith for people to respond. Okay? So again... You have these seven ways. You have, let's just review them before I go on. You have feel it, read it, see it, think it, say it, dream it, and experience it. So maybe are some of you, and you can comment on this later, but you can raise your hand now. Are some of you maybe having words of knowledge that you didn't realize were words of knowledge? Yeah, so it's very, I think that happens more than we realize it. So, now that you understand that, oh, I'm having words of knowledge, how, what are some keys in how to give a word of knowledge? Here's some, just some really, really practical ways. Because like with anything, you know, God gives these things, but how do, we, how do we do things in order where there's not just mass chaos and confusion? So, first of all, be specific as possible. Changes or additions to a word of knowledge can cause confusion. So if you're given a word of knowledge, you know, let's say, pain in your shoulder. If you, you can just say, someone's having pain in their shoulder. Or you can say, someone's having a, a pain in their shoulder that starts in their neck, and as it travels down the, into the shoulder it becomes a burning pain. Which do you think is going to be the most effective word of knowledge? The, the second one, the first one, if you're just like, oh, neck pain, you know, that, and again, if you're like me, if it's close, I'm going to respond, okay? But I think the more um, accurate that you are, the better. An example of this is that a guy gave a word of knowledge in a meeting about um, someone had tripped over a green hose and had suffered an injury because of the fall. Well, this guy, he sees a green hose, and so he assumes that it's a green garden hose. Well, it, that's not what happened. There was a guy there that had actually tripped over a green pressure hose. 
And so when the guy made an assumption, the guy that's res the word of knowledge is for is like, well, that must not be me because I tripped over a green pressure hose and not a green garden hose. And, and we think that, you know, that's not a big deal, but sometimes we're afraid to respond because we're afraid we're going to upset God. True? Okay. So, um, you know, be as specific as possible. Another one is um, etiquette is important. You know there's even etiquette in the Holy Spirit. And uh, first, I mentioned this, but 1 Corinthians 14, 40 says, Everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. So if you're receiving a word of knowledge in a large meeting, the word should not be given unless the leaders indicate the time is appropriate. Okay, and if it's a large meeting, even if you try to give it, it's you're, no one's probably going to notice you. Uh, I know even when we traveled with with Randy to Brazil, you know you're in churches of hundreds, if not many times thousands of people, and so there will be a point in the service when Randy will have his team come up and give words of knowledge. If you're just yelling that from the crowd in the middle of worship or in the middle of the sermon you're going to be out of order and you're going to be distracting. Okay, So there's an order. Just because God gives you something, give it in an orderly fashion when it's appropriate. Um, if it's in a smaller meeting, it is wise. it might be wise to say something like, does anyone have a sharp pain in their knee right now? Okay, Maybe if you're in a, in a home cell meeting, or something like that. You're in a prayer group. You're in that type of small meeting. And if someone responds, you might say, I just had a sharp pain in my right knee, and I think it might be a word of knowledge. Okay? Humility. Don't move, move with humility in these things. Say, hey, I think this could be a word of knowledge. You know, don't be like, well, the Lord has showed me that you have, you no, know, you're, you know, <laughs> be very normal, very natural, very humble, very loving. Now, if the person wants prayer, pray at that moment, okay? If they don't want prayer, don't, don't force it on them. Or if they want prayer later, pray for them later. Never force prayer on someone. Even though sometimes you may be really excited. <laughs> I got the word right. <laughs> but they may be like, no. Okay. They may not be comfortable with that. They may have had a bad experience. They may not want you anywhere around them. Okay. So, so just be careful. And again, uh, always minister in humility with love as the motivation. Our motivation isn't to be like, Score, I got it right. Okay? You know, I'm going to be having my own ministry anytime now. Okay? No, it's we're ministering in love. You know, that's the whole purpose of... of uh, we're stirring what God gives for the benefit of others. Okay? Um, here's another pastoral oversight in the local church. Um, you know, we've, we've really tried to create a culture in our local church where the gifts, there's freedom to move in the gifts. And, uh, but even with that freedom, you can't just have a free-for-all. You know, there's a certain order. There's a time when you can give that. Uh, you know, if someone has a word of knowledge and you come and tell me in worship, I'm probably going to let you give it at some point. Um, there was a period, and it, it doesn't happen as much now. I would mentioned the, the young guy named Josh Ryan. He'd have a word of knowledge almost every service. He's naturally evangelistic, and he would just move in that. And he and my son-in-law, Will Corbell, of course, Will's very preoccupied with a new baby, but they almost always would have a word of knowledge on our Sunday morning service about physical healing. If not one of them, both of them. And I just turn them loose. You know, them and Olivia, and of course Olivia is so, uh, you, you know, being used in the worship team, but uh, I, I think if people are, are moving in those things, man, turn them loose. Let them do it. And uh, 
So um, be as natural as possible when giving a word of knowledge. Okay? Don't, you don't have to be super spiritual or spooky spiritual or crazy charismatic. You know, you don't have to... Now, if Holy Spirit's making you tremble and shake, that's one thing, okay? But you don't have to do that. And uh, quoting Dr. Clark, teach the people to avoid hype, unnatural spiritual tones or attitudes, overuse of authority, and or Christianese, okay? Especially if you're out ministering, giving words of knowledge in Walmart, you know? Well, the Lord has given me... A word of knowledge for you, sister. And she's going to be like, get thee behind me, dude, or I'm going to thump you. Okay? Right? You have to be careful how you move in those things. We must walk in a supernatural dimension of the power of God, yet not scare people with our weirdness and excess. So be very careful how you move. Again, move in times that are appropriate for giving a word of knowledge with pastoral approval. And this good times, you know, might be something like either after worship or at the end of a message. Those are good times to have words of knowledge. for. So for those of you who are in Global Harvest Church and you may be having a word of knowledge, don't be afraid to approach me and say, hey, I think I may be getting them one of them word of knowledge things. So, you know... Give it and come, come to me when there's, when there's a, because there's a flow in a service, okay? And, you know, there are times when it's the right time to give that and, and I'll, I'll work with you on that, okay? Um, ways that you can really practice and grow in this gift, okay? One disadvantage to having words of knowledge in a local church is, especially if it's not a big church, you know everybody. You, you know all their conditions. You know that, um, you know, Sister Bertha is going to get arthritis in her hips when a cold front's coming in. And you know that uh, Brother Jim's got pain in his lower back. You, you know those things, and so... A lot of times because of that, you don't have the opportunity to practice this gift. So, I, you know, a good way are things like, um, you know, trips, uh, small groups. That's a great thing. Uh, international ministry trips. Go on a trip with Randy Clark to Global Awakening. Or with Global Awakening to, you know, they go multiple trips throughout the year. They're not cheap. But um, you'll get more ministry experience just in practical, hands-on ministry. Um, and you'll be so prepared because I've trained you. You know, I mean, seriously, a lot of what you'll get in training, you'll be able to flow in these things. So uh, those are great opportunities to go and practice what you've learned. Okay. Um, another one, uh, you know, and I've mentioned this already, but, you, you know, to, to do this, you're just going to have to step out and you're going to have to take risk in moving in a word of knowledge. You're, you're never going to be 100% certain that you're right. I've heard Will Hart talk about times that he's ministered and he's like, you know, and I'm giving words of knowledge. And he said, it's one of those notes, one of those nights where he said, I wasn't getting anything right. So, you know... Ministers are human. They're, they're going to miss it sometime. And that's part of the growing process. So, um, you know, I think that's why even in the local church, we should be trained to move in these things. You know, we, we should be, have opportunities to be equipped. And, um, and if you miss it, that's okay. Now, if you're being obnoxious about it and, and missing it every Sunday, we might give you a little more training, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you're going to have to step out some and practice it, okay? Now, final points here in closing. The gifts of the Spirit are essential for the growth of the church. You know, 
and I've used this example before, but you know, if if God gives you tools, those of you that build houses, I know Tim's done some construction stuff, uh, you know, but it's hard to build a house with hammers and nail, hammer and nails, you know. But if you have every available tool to build something, how much better is that going to be and how much better of a house is that going to be? So every tool that God gives, you want to utilize it. And the gifts of the Spirit are essential for the growth of the church. And a couple of scriptures here. Uh, Romans 15, 18 through 19. Paul said, I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of the signs and wonders, through the power of the Spirit of God. And then in 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay? Again, I love that scripture because it, it points out that God gives us spiritual gifts to use in service to others. Okay, and uh, that that we're and not only does he give those gifts so that we can serve others, but that we're to be faithful stewards of the grace of God. And I, I just find that uh, the more that you steward something, the more it grows. Okay, uh, and maybe there's numerous reasons. Maybe just because you become more confident. In that, but also God under there's a reality that God un, understands that He can trust you to give you something, and and you'll move in it, and you'll move in in an order, Amen. All right, Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat>